Hello friends, welcome to your only channel Times of Coding. Today in our series Scala Express, we will learn case classes and its pattern matching ability. In this session, you will understand how to write case classes and how we can utilize their pattern matching ability while writing our code. In our previous session, we have seen how to write JUnit test cases and we have written test cases by using function suit and in BDD style we have used while writing test cases and we have seen specification which is feature and property. In this session we will learn how to define case classes, how to utilize pattern matching and how to guard the pattern. In Scala, case classes we define with the help of case keyword as I'm defining here as project management and on top of it I have declared one abstract class which I have named as a startup and then I'm defining case classes as project management and then the project management case classes is actually extending a startup likewise I've defined community content management and matchmaking so by defining these all classes as a case class it will give us the ability to match pattern the pattern match we have already seen in our previous session but here we are keeping sequence of alternatives so that if one pattern will match we will execute accordingly our further logic so here i'm defining community class okay uh, the advantage of having case classes is you don't need to use new keyword with them so we can directly define this class object with community and then we are passing two arguments a social interaction and Mark Zuckerberg. So that's how we define case class object. What if if we wanted to nest the code, we can do that part as well. So let's say content management is our one of the object. And by the way, when we talk about the content management, one of the from Microsoft which is actually doing good in this domain is SharePoint. So when you talk about the content management here this content management can have a content if you see here content area of history so this content management as SharePoint can hold a content of type Excel doc and zip and here we can have another startup because we have defined here a startup is and our startup is our abstract class here so we can define another project management company which is Microsoft if you wanted to read this object in simple language, SharePoint is a content management company which do content management of these types and it's coming from the parent company called Microsoft. Okay, so now defined Facebook and inside the Facebook we have defined theme and the sponsor. So theme was social interaction, sponsor was Mark Zuckerberg. The advantage of having case classes here is every element which we have defined as a parameter inside that case class will behave as a field now so while printing the value i'm showcasing as field here so now i will call facebook.theme and we should get social interaction so here i've given the call of these statements the output we will see when we do practicals you might be wondering these themes and content and a startup is coming as a field here but when we define case classes our Scala takes care of many additional things by own self in this example in fact we are having dot copy function as well which will get us the similar type of object if we apply facebook dot copy then we will get facebook similar kind of object and here I am keeping name of sponsor as Jack Dorsey okay and since we are changing the sponsor name here and case classes give us the ability to make that parameter as a field we can call that parameter also here as a field so if you see all these bunch of functionality we can just add by adding caves in our class name while defining our classes so compiler actually takes care of defining all these functions as implicit fields at compile time now the biggest advantage now the biggest advantage of having case class is its pattern matching ability and that we will see in this example so here I'm defining one function called get company type 
and I'm keeping one parameter here as a startup. So a startup will match type of community or content management. And if it is not matching with these above three cases, then it will get executed by this default case. So here we are keeping wildcard. So now our function is ready and we will see output when we do practical once we complete all this theory. So if you see in this example, we mainly talk about the case classes, but we can mix several things inside with this match statement. We can mix sequence, we can mix type match, we can match with any conditions that we are having. So let's check it out. So now in this example, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find out a string value inside the map, if it exists or not. And there is one important aspect I will show you here about Scala. So here I'm defining one function called is a string exist in map. And this is taking any parameter type and this will match with case m which is expecting a value as map a string comma int type and if it get value type of this then it will print true otherwise wildcard will get us false so now we are calling this function as a string and then int so we are getting true as expected and then we are calling in second statement a string and a string and here also we are getting true but actually we should get false why it is happening like this maybe we have not understood this pattern matching well here let's try one more time instead of a string if we keep something as a boolean what will happen still it is giving us true technically it should not be the case because we have mentioned map of a string and int type so let me give you one logic here this pattern matching is actually dependent and as defined as erasure model of java erasure model is the model which in fact has been used in generics of java so that means when we do pattern matching like that it just check the uppermost type which is map so compiler was happy and it was getting us true because in actuals it was not checking what we are passing internally but if you pass anything else except that map you will get false and inside that map whatever you pass it does not care that's what the law of erasure model here i've given some theory which you can read maybe and moving on to next very important aspect of this pattern matching is Previously, we were doing the pattern matching of type where we were including case classes. Let's say case community is a type of class and there we have given social interaction and Mark Zuckerberg. Additionally, we can perform variable binding also here. So let's say if you wanted to keep some name with Mark Zuckerberg, you can keep it as CEO at the rate. This at the rate will represent your whole value which you have defined here. So instead of writing Mark Zuckerberg again here, you can simply write CEO. So when this Facebook type of object will match this community type of definition, you will get CEO as the output of this pattern match. So moving on, we have defined the pattern matching. But what if, if we have got some if and else condition and on the basis of that conditional statements matching, we wanted to define our outcome. That also we can do. And this concept is known as pattern matching guards. Why do we call the guards? Because here, if you notice in this example, we are having guards called if condition. Now, let me explain you this example first. We are defining one example called number is odd or even. So that means we are giving one number as parameter and we are expecting this function to tell us whether given number is even or odd. So number will match and then case number of int type here we are defining this is a pattern match and then we are having a guard condition here. So if number mod 2 is equal to is equal to 0 that means even number. If it is is equal to is equal to 1 that means odd number. And here we have given the wildcard. Since a number can be odd or even we can leave it as blank. So it is totally optional to us. 
I think in theory we have covered today's content. Let's do some practical. Okay. So this is the Scala worksheet I have created here. And that's the first line of code which we have seen today. So here I'm defining startup class and with this startup I'm defining four other case classes. So you see all these classes are getting defined here one after another. Okay. So after that we are defining one object type of community where we are keeping social interaction and Mark Zuckerberg here. Since community case class take two parameter here, this definition will be fine. Okay, so here we have got object type, community, object name, rest zero, and this is having social interaction and Mark Zuckerberg as arguments. Okay, the next thing what we have done, we have defined this object into a variable called Facebook. So here we have got Facebook instead of result zero, and this is again the same type and the same value. Now the next thing what we have done is we have defined SharePoint type of content management, and this content management is having content and the start name. So I will not mistake to call Microsoft as a starter, but this is just an example to explain you well. So here content management is having content which is list of a string type and here we are having a startup so any subclass of a startup we can define it here so we are defining project management as Microsoft and let's see the project management definition so case class project management just expect one parameter that's why this statement is fine after defining this statement we are getting SharePoint object content management type and we have got our past argument as fields of this object. Now it's time to print some object now. So I'm first printing Facebook. Now when we print Facebook, we get community, social interaction and Mark Zuckerberg as expected. But Facebook type of object was having two parameters and we can access these parameters as field while retrieving the value. So let's retrieve the theme value here. So we are getting social interaction as expected. Now the same thing we can perform from SharePoint object as well. So we are retrieving content first and then a startup, which is project management type, Microsoft is the name. Okay, as I told you earlier, that when we declare these classes as case classes, compile adds several functions in it. So one of the functions we are taking here is copy. So Facebook.copy and we are changing the sponsor name because both the companies are having similar theme and we are making Twitter here. So Twitter community type and then value is social interaction called theme and Chuck Dorsey is the CEO. Okay, then we are printing Twitter.sponsor name. So we are getting Chuck Dorsey. After this example, we have defined get company type. And this get company type is taking a startup pattern matching. Here I've defined one for Twitter, one for Facebook, and one for SharePoint. And if our given object do not meet these three case classes, it will get us outcome as anonymous. Now I'm passing SharePoint here. We are getting content management Excel in Microsoft. Let me change this. Let me change this SharePoint to Twitter. So here I'm calling get company type and I'm passing Twitter and we are getting community social interaction check Dorsey. So that's how this definition pattern matching will work. Earlier it was SharePoint. So we were getting Microsoft and this information. Now it is Twitter. We are getting this information. Okay, let's move on. So then we're defining is a string exist in map. And we are keeping one parameter as any type. And we are keeping map of a string and int. Now this is an interesting example as I told you earlier. So let's run it again. Okay. So our example is here now. Is a string exists in map. This definition has been defined. Now we are passing first value as toc.1. So as per this definition, we should have two. And in these two fields also, we are getting true, true. 
Now let me give you one more type where we will get false. So let me change this map to list. Now when I change this map to list, we will get false now. Because as per Erasure model, it was just checking the type of immediate subtype. So here if you see, we are getting false now. Okay, and then I'm doing Facebook match with community type and here I'm binding one variable name with its argument value. So CEO at the rate Mark Zuckerberg we are defining here and here we are keeping just CEO instead of this whole string. You could find this in a concise way. So when we execute it will get us this value as we expected. Since we have not defined any variable here, it is keeping by default result 11 as per this is color worksheet sequence and any type of value and we are getting name of sponsor. Moving on, we are defining one function called number is odd or even. Now this function we have defined to understand the pattern matching guard. This is expecting number of int type and it is having guard condition called mod 2 is equal to is equal to 0 and 1 to find whether number is even or odd. So now our function definition is ready. When we pass 217, we got odd number type and when we pass 218, we got even number type. I hope you like today's content. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.